For better or for worse, these days, battle royales are a dime a dozen. Ever since Fortnite broke nearly every single gaming record in history, it seems like every publisher has been trying to get a slice of that very lucrative pie. Even though it may feel like the peak of the genre is long past, games like Warzone prove that it still has room to grow, and developers to this day are still releasing their own unique takes on the genre. Enter Hyperscape, one of those titles that released pretty late into the genre's lifespan, only this past July. Like all of the popular BRs before it, it debuted to much fanfare. However, for reasons that we will discuss in today's video, it faced a sharp drop in player numbers and recently made some strong balancing decisions against its community's wishes. So how did Ubisoft's Battle Royale go from being the next big thing to just another blip on the BR roadmap only three months after its release? Well, let's find out. This is what happened to Hyperscape. If you don't know, Hyperscape is a free-to-play, first-person shooter battle royale developed by Ubisoft Montreal. Its closed alpha released on July 2nd, 2020, and was later released on PS4, Xbox One, and PC on August 11th. If you've played any battle royale game, you'll know what to expect. You and 99 opponents drop into a sprawling, static cityscape with the goal of becoming the last person standing. Hyperscape offers an interesting alternative win condition, where at some point around the end of the match, a crown will spawn somewhere on the map. If any player is able to hold that crown for 45 seconds, they are instantly declared the winner. This feature leans heavily into the primary aspect that sets Hyperscape apart from the competition, its verticality and speed. While the genre started as a slow-paced survival game, as of late, BRs have been getting faster and faster as games like Apex Legends have proven that fluid movement and a survival setting aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. Following this theme, Hyperscape's approach to movement is about the same, letting you slide and double jump gracefully across large distances, covering huge swaths of land in very little time. In fact, many of the abilities that you pick up over the course of the game are movement related, and there are jump pads all over the map further contributing to the game's emphasis on verticality and momentum. The other interesting thing that Hyperscape brings to the table is its death mechanic. When in a squad, any player that dies is not simply put into a spectator mode. Instead, they become what's called an Echo, basically a ghost that can run around individually. This ghost can scout areas and ping loot, keeping dead players active and playing even after being downed. Eventually, the goal is to revive your dead teammates and get everyone back into the action. Thanks to the game being one of the later BRs to be released, it gets to learn from the successes and failures of previous titles. Ubisoft took this opportunity to streamline many of the typical BR mechanics. For example, gone are the usual gun attachments, replaced instead with a system that automatically levels up your weapon or ability when you pick up a duplicate. Furthermore, even though the game sports the standard spread of weapon types, there is only one universal ammo currency that works with everything. This streamlining and keeping you focused on not juggling your inventory contributes to the core philosophy that Hyperscape seems to want to push. Keep moving. Fortnite's success cemented Twitch as one of the most effective marketing tools today, and other games like Valorant have used Twitch to build a player base prior to release. Opting to do a stunt very similar to the Apex Legends launch, Hyperscape had its own official reveal on July 2nd. Nearly every major streamer was participating in the sponsored streamer event that day and giving out beta access codes through drops in a system very reminiscent of Valorant. Its stats would peak at over 460,000 concurrent viewers. According to the game's creative director, making the game a spectator experience as much as a player one was the goal from the very beginning. This led to another major feature that was developed, Twitch integration. During a typical game, the AI director will spawn random environmental conditions around various parts of the map. Anything from low gravity to reduced cooldowns to triple jump. If you were watching someone play the game through Twitch, you and the chat would have the option to vote for the next random condition that will happen in the player's game. This feature was almost identical to the Darwin project. However, the integrations in Hyperscape went even further. 
with the game's battle pass, allowing you to gain XP while watching your favorite streamer and unlocking exclusive skins through linking it to Twitch. Just to give you guys an idea, it, it is actually quite fun. Now this is going to be free to play. I mean, it's got some fairly interesting mechanics. But all in all, this is a game with a lot of potential, particularly for fast-paced FPS fans. I just hope it has enough widespread appeal. <laughs> I think this will be, at the very least, somewhat successful. Okay. I don't know. I don't. I don't think it's an apex killer. I don't think it's going to be the number one battle royale. Um, but I think it will find some success because it is very fun. Overall, Hyperscape got favorable reviews, and one of the main points always brought up was that it simply felt like another battle royale in a sea of similar titles. The majority of the BR audience was fairly content with the current offerings. Fortnite, Warzone, Apex, and PUBG, and the small subset that enjoys fast-paced movement would probably be drawn a bit more to Apex Legends just because it's been around for longer. When the game finally released on August 11th, it was met with a significantly smaller amount of fanfare compared to its first reveal, peaking at around 150,000 viewers on Twitch. Unfortunately, this downward trend continued, and after its official launch, the game continued to bleed viewership heavily. Today, the game averages a concurrent viewership of around a couple hundred. Now, while viewership metrics are not necessarily a good way to base a game's health, these days, it is a good method of establishing the game's relevancy and popularity. Viewership might even have a bit more significance in this particular instance because there was such a heavy interest in making the game a spectator-first experience. And that brings us to the big question. Why didn't Hyperscape take off? The first and most obvious reason is genre fatigue. While the game does bring some new things to the table, and it does effectively streamline the whole experience down to a fairly fun package, perhaps a large portion of people felt there wasn't enough difference to warrant booting it up over something else. One of these differences was no cross-platform play. Even though a few years ago it's something that was almost never seen, nowadays, for a multiplayer-only title like this, Crossplay is viewed as essential to keep the player count high. It is important to note that cross-platform has been promised from the developers themselves, who have stated on the record that they are going to be implementing it earlier than they had planned in order to deal with the game's low lobby counts. The cause of these low lobby counts is credited to a very controversial patch, Patch 2.1. This patch implemented many buffs to ADS aim assist for controllers and a drastic health regen change to the game. Aim Assist settings for controllers have historically been a very tricky situation to deal with. The goal is to make gameplay simpler for new players while they figure out the controls, but what inevitably happens is that it just makes the game easier for higher skilled players. This leads us to the other thing that Hyperscape misses out on, and a large portion of its player base has been requesting. Skill-based matchmaking. Skill-based matchmaking in BRs is another hotly debated topic. Some consider it to be the antithesis to the Battle Royale formula while others call anyone going against it someone that just wants to prey on low-skilled players. Regardless, it is a potential solution to reduce the disparity in skill levels between players, which causes them to increase the aim assist. However, it's the other feature in patch 2.1 that the entire player base universally rejected when the patch went live, the health regen change. While the game does have healing abilities, the primary way to restore health is having to go into regeneration mode when you have not taken damage for 5 seconds. In patch 2.1, this number was increased to 15 seconds, three times the original amount. The main problem with this is that it seems to go against the core philosophy of the game, keep moving. With this change, it now makes more sense for a player to run and hide instead of holding out and preparing to fight. On the patch notes page, the reasoning is described as being primarily to create more opportunities to conclude fights by an elimination, but the player base seems to all agree that this changes the pace of the game heavily and forces quite a different playstyle, contrasting with the one that everyone currently enjoys. Nevertheless, the feedback has been heard loud and clear, with Ubisoft developers responding quickly online to the player base's concerns. As of right now, they are sticking with their decision and tuning the numbers slightly, but we'll have to wait and see if this change gets fully reverted. The health regen, literally, please revert it back. If it takes, I will take 10 seconds at this point. That this can achieve what they want to do. I've looked at the comments on uh, Reddit and Twitter and probably the comments of this video as well, and I know there's going to be a lot of people are upset at what they're doing here. Looking at the difference between launch and today, 
It's easy to call Hyperscape the flavor of the month battle royale of July. Maybe it was only due to clever marketing that it started off so strong, but it is important to keep in mind that this game is only actually three months old. So as easy as it is to write it off due to a sharp viewership drop, Ubisoft has pulled similar miracles with its other multiplayer titles. Rainbow Six Siege, for example, had a fairly disastrous first year, but with some time and effort over the course of its lifespan, the game has really turned itself around and become a major player in the esports community. Maybe the hype was simply too big at the start for a game that wasn't unique enough to separate itself from its competitors. If you can't one-up the competition with something truly amazing, you're going to have a hard time trying to convince people to drop a title they've already invested time and money into, regardless of how much money you threw at streamers to advertise your game. The reality is, there isn't all that much wrong with Hyperscape. It's a high-quality, AAA title that does what it sets out to do fairly well. It streamlines the BR experience down to the shooting and fast-paced action. And there are some minor issues, but nothing so drastic that it cannot be patched out in time. Perhaps with a more traditional marketing push when crossplay gets released, the game can develop its player base and in turn develop its streaming presence. Maybe being just a pretty good game isn't enough these days. And maybe the lukewarm reaction is an indicator that people are finally moving on from trying out newcomers to this genre. Regardless, no game, not even Fortnite, can sustain that initial popularity forever. Sometimes, developers succeed in maintaining the hype in those first few months, and other times they struggle honing in on what made them a success in the first place. While today it does seem like Hyperscape may have dropped the ball, perhaps eventually it'll manage to soar high with the best of them. This video is made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. Massive thank you to everyone on this list, and shout out to Arknox, Sammy, Shampoo, Weeaboo, Nathan, Nate, Mav, Sierra, Foxy, and Lyra for being Platinum supporters, as well as an extra special shout out to Raffi, Noodles, Marco, and Steven for being Diamond supporters. You guys are awesome. If you also want to support our channel and unlock perks, check out the Patreon link in the description below, or join our Discord server, where we take suggestions for future videos like this one. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name is Jonah, thanks for watching.